From the Air Force News Service, this is Air Force Television News. With Staff Sergeant April Lawrence. Ever since mythology's Icarus, man has wanted to break the bonds of Earth and fly. Orville and Wilbur Wright, Amelia Earhart, Chuck Yeager, Alan Shepard. From the famous to the unknown, the yearning has always been a part of the human psyche. Our first two stories focus on that, each different, each in its own way an example of the importance of flying. In 1940, Sir Douglas Bader of the Royal Air Force became the first known amputee to return to the cockpit. More than 60 years later, there are those who are not about to let the loss of a limb prevent them from sitting at the controls of an aircraft. Staff Sergeant Melissa Allen has one example of that determination. Determination, as she explains, that involves more than just flying. It's a warm day in the nation's capital. Major Andrew Lurake is visiting patients at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. Patients like 19-year-old Airman First Class Anthony Pizzifred, who lost part of his leg after stepping on a landmine in Afghanistan. It's just because of all the trauma and all the surgeries. That's, that's pretty much all swelling. Major Lou Rake can empathize with Anthony Pizzifred. The Major is also an amputee. Five years ago, while riding in the woods of Southern Maryland, Major Andrew Lou Rake lost control of his motorcycle and broke his leg. An infection while he was hospitalized resulted in 18 surgeries. And after three years of suffering, Major Lou Rake made the difficult decision to have his leg amputated. A decision that would force him out of the cockpit and start his quest to resume his flying career. It's part of who I am. It's one of the things that I wanted when I was a kid. And yeah, I've done, I've done it and I've been there, done that, so to speak. But I... I had it taken away from me by a little microorganism and I don't want to let it beat me. The first step, time spent at Wilford Hall Medical Center in San Antonio, Texas to determine if he was indeed fit to fly. I think he's very functional at this time. His gait is excellent, uh, his strength is good on that side and certainly on both sides it's very good. I've done a lot of physical therapy, a lot of exercise trying to get to the level that I'm at now and because I knew what it was going to take to get back into the cockpit. So. While he waited to hear whether he will in fact be back at the controls, Andrew Lou Rake stayed in shape and did what he could to help fellow amputees at Walter Reed. He's actually been a great part of uh, <laughs> like mine and my wife's recovery here because having good friends and good support like that is the is the best thing. That's like the best therapy. Therapy that Major Lou Rake and his wife Lisa are glad to give. Therapy they know all too well. I had to bring him breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I had to help him shave and brush his teeth. and I had to do everything for him, and it was quite different. We've been together for, it's now 23 years. Um, you never think the sickness and the health and all that stuff is going to come into play in your marriage, but it did, and um, I did what I had to do to take care of my husband. Lisa Lou Rake usually accompanies her husband to Walter Reed. Her role? Explaining. To show the young amputees that life can be normal after losing a limb. It brings a lot more credibility to some of the issues that some of these, uh, some of the men have. Um, the ones that aren't married, or even the ones that are, whether they'll be able to keep their life or they will be able to get girlfriends and, and eventually become married, because it is a self-image. Uh, issue of not having your limb because you're not whole, you're not what you used to be. And bringing her along with me just solidifies that life is normal and that you, uh, you can pretty much do anything you want to and there's no, no holding you back. No holding back. It's a good way to define Major Lou Rake. That quest to get back into the cockpit, it was successful. He's been cleared to fly. It's, it's hard to express how much gratitude I owe towards everybody and thank yous really don't go beyond or don't say enough but I don't know what else I could do I can't go around and hug everybody but I'd like to <laughs> but now his passion like his life has moved from the sky to the lives at Walter Reed but believe it or not that's probably the most important thing going on in my life right now uh, if if I was given the choice to go fly somewhere uh, and have to leave Andrews or uh, away, essentially away from Andrews uh, and return to the cockpit or stay here and be able to continue what, 
what's happening with us going to Walter Reed because of the war still going on, I probably turn down the assignment, the flying assignment. It's just, just more important than, um, it's more important for me to be able to give back. Lisa agrees. With this amputation, he's able to help so many people because he's such a positive, outgoing person. And we're able to change lives up at Walter Reed just by living by, giving them an example to live by. So it's a positive thing because people say to me, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, please don't be sorry. It's okay. Don't feel sorry for us. He's not a cripple. He's not disabled. He's very normal. I do get a good parking spot, though. <laughs> he jokes now, but it's been a long, difficult battle. And in six months, he'll be doing what he loves to do, flying. Staff Sergeant Melissa Allen, Air Force News, Andrews Air Force Base, Maryland. The right a profile in courage as a hometown Air Force officer is honored by an organization that he never wanted to belong to. Today, Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Lurick received the first Henry Viscardi Award for his perseverance in the face of physical challenge. This award is named for the man who founded a corporation to help the disabled make it into the mainstream world. Lance Williams has the story on what makes Andrew Lurick such an inspiration in tonight's Tampa Bay People Report. An eight-year-old boy ready to fly off into the wild blue yonder. Who's this little kid in the back seat? Thirty-six years later, Andrew Lurake delights in that grainy memory. It was just awesome. <laughs> you can see me in the back. Andrew loved extreme sports before anyone called them that. He had a need for speed. And that's what I did for fun. At 19, the fun had run out. A motocross accident breaking every bone in his left foot. And the doctor's telling me that I'll probably never walk right again, or at least walk without a cane. Andrew is not a quitter, and he got the last laugh. He became a hotshot jet fighter. He flew in Desert Storm, finally rising to the pinnacle. Major Andrew Lou Rake, piloting Air Force Two. Find the vice president, the first lady. Um, members of Congress. A proud pilot no different than that little boy strutting out of his first flight. Except that day when his pride took a dive. I probably had the worst landing of my life with Mrs. Clinton on board. Um, just, you, know, you have just bad bounce. ones every day. I just pounded it in the ground really hard. Um, and what is it she said? Uh, nothing. <laughs> About that time, Major Lou Rake had taken up motocross again. And again, tragedy struck. And the throttle hung wide open on me, so it launched me about 15 feet into the air. A bad landing shattered that same left leg. Within months, the loss of that limb shattered his flying career. A guy like you, you hear amputation. Didn't accept it. The Air Force had never let someone in Andrew's shape fly for them. Andrew refused to accept that. You have said, I will fly again. Sure. Andrew's dogged determination could put him in the cockpit again. That and a revolutionary new computerized leg. This is the six million dollar man leg. Pretty much, yeah. For him, it's a badge of honor. It's a high-tech piece of equipment. I like showing it off. It's just because all the trauma. He shows it off to other military amputees as a way to encourage them. A labor of love his mother says is clearly providential. Even if he had to suffer, to learn what it is to suffer so that he can now talk to the amputees at and the hospital. Give them encouragement. Major Lou Rake is now Lieutenant Colonel Lou Rake, in line to be the first amputee to fly for the Air Force. A flight into the wild blue yonder even sweeter than that breathtaking day all those years ago. In St. Petersburg, Lance Williams, News Channel 8. Sadly, it was not the actual motocross accident that stole Colonel Lou Rake's leg, but a series of staph infections that set in after 18 surgeries. After the 19th surgery, doctors amputated his leg. But what a, uh, an inspiration and a, uh, a person of courage who is an example for so many. Never lose hope. Clearly he didn't, and he's doing well. Sorry.